This is Eva Hamilton, and you're listening to On The Slab of Horror Show. Hello and welcome back to the On The Slab Horror Show, the show that we bring to you each and every Friday night. I mean, we brought Ted back the other night for the first time in a while. So, Ted, why do we do this on a Friday night? Read the t-shirt. Friday night is horror night. Uh, For anyone who doesn't know, uh, that was the way it was over here in Ireland. You didn't get horror films except on a Friday night. They just weren't on outside of that time. After the watershed, ten o'clock. Yeah, it's where it's where I got to vi- to find my very first horror movie, uh, which was Nightmare on Elm Street, when I was twelve, and it was awesome. Um, tonight, the king isn't here, the dynamo isn't here, the tombstone is here, but tonight, as you can see below, this is a guest that I've been in the works trying to get for a long time. This is star of Sawed Off, Ruin Me. Death Kiss, uh, Quest for Love, probably not one for this show, <laughs> uh, and the upcoming poster girl for Mute Letter 2, which you can see by my hat. <laughs> uh, this is Miss Eva Hamilton. How are you? I am good. How are you guys? We're here. <laughs> <laughs> That's an answer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, as I said in the, in the intro there, it's this one's been a, a while in the making. Um, I did say this. You were one of the top guests that I wanted to get on when we started picking up guests. Thank so when, when the opportunity became around, I was like, "Yep, here we go." <laughs> yeah, I'm we're glad all we in. I know it was kind of a process, but we we got here. <laughs> Eventually, but sure. Yeah, hey, you got life, nearly, life gets in the way. You got nearly every person off mute later too in the process <laughs> to getting here, Greg. So that was, you know, that was good as well. I mean, how many people it, have you had from mute later too so far? Uh, so we've had Buddy and Jeff. Anna from obviously behind the camera we've had Anna Dan Carl Cheney oh wow that's right um actually we had Ruti Martinez uh on a couple of weeks ago um and we're trying to work out a date with Eric Six Oh, you have to get Eric. I love Eric. He's I mean I, I actually don't think there's there's many more that I can go with. <laughs> Um, but as it says, obviously by the list of people that we've had on, you can tell I was a big fan. And it was actually yourself that told me there was a second one coming out. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. All the way back thing. When I seen it, I was like, that can't be a second one. And then I thought it was a reboot and I was getting really angry with it. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want the reboot. And then obviously we've seen people come back and whatnot. So I got to, I got to thank you for telling me about it. I think I would oh. have eventually found it, but yeah but i'm happy to have. i mean i everybody was surprised obviously it's been like what 40 years you know well, Wasn't 86 it? 86 37 years or something yeah yeah, yeah. had you seen had you seen the original one yes beforehand yeah, yeah i am like, a horror person so i i knew it i knew you know a, a buddy and all that so yeah i was i was super super happy to get on board this that was awesome he actually spoke really highly of you when i got to sit down with him Oh, um, he's he's an absolute gent. <laughs> incredible. He's he's one of the best people I've ever worked with. He's just like just an amazing human being, truly. So, how did you go about getting into this movie? Um, so kind of a weird roundabout way. I had, I think I'd heard about it at some point, somewhere. Um, and I I think I sent Buddy a friend request like on Facebook. Just I saw that he was on there, and I was like, oh, this is cool. That's happening. I didn't even know he was on here, so I added him. And he had sent me a message, you know, saying we're we're casting, and I, I, you know, I'd be interested in potentially. And so he sent me the script and kind of talked about which characters he was thinking. And um, I loved the script, and I, you know, it was it was really like just a no brainer. It was like Mutilator Two. Of course, I'm going to do Mutilator Two. And I really liked the script, and they had on board, and um, Buddy was, you know, wonderful. So it was like, of course, I want to do this. Absolutely, straight in. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. There was really not a lot of hesitation. I was like, definitely doing it. <laughs> as, as you said, you're a fan of horror, so you've obviously seen the original one. Um, I, for me, if I was an actor and someone says, yeah, they're making a second one, I wouldn't have even read the script. I'd have been like, yeah, I'm just in. Yeah. I mean, I have, like, it's like, I have to, like, go through my manager and stuff, so I have to read it and, you know, be like, this is what they're offering and blah, 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 blah. But yeah, it was like 100%. Like, I didn't need to read it. I was going to do it. And also, I mean, my character had... I mean, I can't give anything away, obviously, but had some really, really cool stuff that happens to her. So I was like, absolutely. As I, I like, 
I'd actually end this if you tell me what happened. Um, I'd be that angry. <laughs> you just click <like> end. <laughs> yeah. Greg, uh, Greg has left the chat. <laughs> I, would I would never do that to you. <laughs> oh, it would be a sad panda if I found out. Because when I found out, it's a, it's kind of like a murder mystery sort of one. I, I like, I like, I loved the original mutilator, but murder mystery ones. I was like, yeah, that sold me even more. I fucking love a murder mystery. I do uh, too. Yeah. And, you know, the the problem with most murder mysteries is they're a little like. They're a little tame because you well like a lot of them are easy but then a lot of them are very tame because it's like okay we'll there's the dead body and then when we show how he got killed it'll be like oh somebody stabbed him lightly once and you're like yeah all right it's yeah i get it like that would kill you but a a horror... thing. No yeah but i'm like here we go let's get a fucking horror one in here like let's have someone get mur like brutalized like that's i'm all about this like oh i can will not disappoint yeah well when it was coming from mutilator i was like it, there's definitely no way it's going to disappoint now like yeah especially with that title i mean the title change that they had in the in the 80s was brilliant from fall break to mutilator um <laughs> but the, the design for anyone who hasn't seen it uh was a, a mutilator 2 with a gaff hook in the two which was i thought was brilliant um yeah. and like the ink or the design work was absolutely fantastic but then, for yourself, obviously, to make the movie, meet with it, working with everybody, to then be told, yeah, you're going to be the poster girl. That yeah, must have been. That, that was that very must have cool. Been something. Uh, expecting that, yeah. I remember when we were shooting um, that particular scene. Like, I remember, kind of, buddy pulled me aside and was showing me the shot um, just before I had even, you know, stepped into it, and it was just really beautiful. Um, the DP, like, just did an incredible job. It's, it's, it was gorgeous, and I remember how much you loved it, and everyone was like, "Oh, this shot! Wow, this is so cool!" But I. You know, I didn't obviously know that would translate into the poster, and it's very flattering. I'm super happy. <laughs> yeah, um, because he actually showed it to me live on the show. Oh, did he? Uh, when yeah, we were done it. He was like, "I can show you the poster," because we were actually we were actually talking about you at the stage. I was like, "You were the one that told me about it." Well, not told me personally, but you put it up on Instagram, and that's where I seen it. And he's like, "Oh, actually, I can show you the poster because they were just about to release it." And by the time the episode came out, it was released, and he showed it to me. I was like, "Deadly." Now, I don't envy you having to stand in the water for however long that took, but <laughs> I'd, 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 ra I'd rather not stand in the sea anyway. It was, yeah. um, it was a challenge, but it was worth it. <laughs> um, and I, I like, it looks very well, especially the under, le under the legs of the pier. Ah, Obviously, yeah. It's like the mollusks and stuff on it. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's but... so hard for me to not like talk about what happens then because it's such a <laughs> But I won't. Um, but yeah, I know it was really. I mean, the, yeah, the way that kind of that setup worked was so beautiful with the lighting and just. I remember there was a night. I think like a couple nights before we shot that, maybe that there had just been this insane fog, just like over you know that that whole pier. I guess all that stuff, and it was just. I mean, beautiful. Like the weather, everything about how that area looked when we shot it was very cinematic and kind of eerie. And just timing wise, I feel like it worked really well. Is, is it the same area? I think I asked him, and I can't remember the answer. It's the same area as the original one, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. In Atlantic Beach. Yeah, it's just obviously more built up now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we were, I mean, where we were shooting was, I think, just like a couple doors down from the original uh, house. So, yeah, we were right there. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, working with the cast, uh, from everyone I've spoke to, the cast has been absolutely brilliant all around so what was what was your opinion i loved them it was such a good experience i i mean i i obviously i've done a lot of horror um done a lot of films too but just yeah it was there's always you know there's like camaraderie and you kind of become like a family on you know mo most every set but this one in particular was just really kind of special i mean everybody in front of the camera behind the camera it was just like a really impressively good talented team of people that work together extremely well and that i just really liked as people so it was really really fun yeah i i found that now from speaking to everyone everyone had their own personality but they all seem to be still very attached to everybody else yeah in, like in friendship ways which is great to see because i've heard of we've had guests on where they said they've they've had films where they go in and they're just like yeah just go in and go home then sure Right. Yeah. And I've had those too. I mean, I've definitely had experiences where you work with people and it's like, okay, this is cool while we're shooting. And then that's sort of it. But um, yeah, this wasn't that. I met like some of the best people really that I've met 
doing this project yeah yeah that's that's awesome and as i said everyone that i've spoke to has been so complimentary of everybody else oh, which is great it's um, well deserved everybody's everybody on it was totally totally talented yeah, um, and, and like I, I was great to see obviously Rudy and Bill come back. Yeah. Um, so the blend of sort of the older cast working with newer cast, it can only benefit everybody else from oh, yeah. helping them along, especially for people that were involved in the original one. Oh yeah, and it was, I mean, that was really cool. I, I didn't, you know, I, I knew they were getting the two of them back and of course I hadn't met them or anything, but I knew them from the original and they were just like, the loveliest like just nicest people like super cool and very you know really like it, it was you're right like it was a good mix of of that and then these new people and I, I feel like it's just like something about that kind of like amalgamation just worked really really nicely and you don't see that a lot with you know with uh sequels there's usually like a totally new cast and a totally new story and it's nice to have that that mix of people yeah so that that was that would have actually got to be my next question so like you see it in films where they get a whole lot of new cast for the for the second one and it could be a whole lot of people that have never really acted before and mm -hmm. it's what takes away from from maybe the second movie like the film might be decent but the sure. acting not so good and things so it's great to see a blend and and like for sort of the older people to come back in and help new people in horror that have done horror for years is great yeah. and it's obviously beneficial for the actual for the genre as well yeah absolutely it's it's so cool to have them back i mean they're they're both really really talented actors and they're just like really fun cool people so i mean it was very kind of weird to be able to like hang out with these people and be like wow you're in the original mutilator like i it's just it's kind of it's kind of a trippy like situation to be to be with those people and it was very cool yeah like um carl grasso was telling us that uh, one night he was sitting watching Young Frankenstein with Terry Kaiser. Oh, sure, yeah. We were all sitting outside and I was like, what a life that is. Make a horror movie, yeah, that's, yes, watch they movies. Did, <laughs> they did all that. They did They did all these movie nights and I was like, I came and shot my um, part of my stuff and then I had to go back to LA for like a week and then I came back to finish the rest. So anyway, for, for whatever reason, they had all these movie nights like when I was gone and I was like, oh, there for this. Oh, so that 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 was just so because you weren't there, was it? Exactly. I mean, they were like, it "Let's was party." Like, that was the <laughs> but no, everybody did hang out. I mean, we were all living together, like at the same hotel. So <laughs> there was a lot of like, "Okay, what are we doing? You know, tonight? Let's let's yeah. go out." Or whatever. I, everybody was cool. I had heard that you'd be walking down, you might meet somebody else, and they'd be like, "Oh yeah, let's go get food." Or yeah, exactly. Well, we were right on the beach, so it was like. Just walk, you know, on the beach to the next little area or whatever, and yeah. See, the beach for me is just not a. It's just a no-go. Don't like the beach. Why? What do you? What about the beach? There's sand on the beach for one. <laughs> what's What's the issue with sand? I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> the feel feeling of it thing, and then I don't like the sea. Oh, okay. Yeah, hmm. don't like the sea at all. The what? shit in that sea that can kill you. <laughs> It's true, but there's shit everywhere that can kill you. You grew up in not... a seaside town, you idiot. How can <laughs> you be scared it. of the sea? I'm not scared of the sea. I don't like it. That's so funny. There's not a whole. There's not really a whole lot in Ireland that can kill you, to be honest. A few dogs, maybe. Where, <laughs> were you, like, when you grew up, were you going in the ocean, or were you just living near it and avoiding it? Oh, I literally lived about five minutes away, but very rarely went into the ocean. Okay, Very rarely. Gotcha. I'd say I've swam in that Irish Sea maybe twenty times in my life. <laughs> oh wow! Wow, the, you really that best. The Irish Sea is extraordinarily cold, to be fair. Uh, so you don't really want to go in unless it's really sunny. And I'm full of seaweed. And where we grew up, they changed the beach from sand to uh, stone. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh, for like it was to do with like flooding and stuff so the stone would stop the beach flooding over onto the promenade and onto the businesses there so you'd go down go swimming and then you'd have to walk out onto a lot of stones to get back to your stuff and everyone was just kind of like this is a bit shit like I'm not going in there again yeah that's less appealing to have to walk on stones yeah Yeah, maybe maybe if it was a fully sandy beach all the time but there's like usually broken glass and stuff around and it's all 
is true. That's an element. It's funny because I don't really ever think about that. I'm just like, oh, see you. Yeah. More so, it's just me. Like, I like I won't eat chips from a, a chipper or anything without a fork. I just there's certain feelings I don't like. You know what? I totally get that. Actually, I have weird things like that. I can't. <laughs> This is such a weird thing to be sharing. I don't, I hate, like, I can't touch flour or, like, powdered sugar. Yeah. Okay. It's just, I I, it leaves it, it's too messy. Yeah, it's too messy. There's something Goes about the right. feeling, like, it just, like, gives me chills. But sand is okay. So I don't know. Anyway, I get it. <laughs> sand is more coarse, though, isn't it? That's, that's what it is. There's something about, like, really fine, finely yeah. ground things. Like, even <laughs> chalk. Like, a teacher, like, in school school would like you know rub the chalkboard to erase with their hands and i'd be like oh like it's weird yeah what is wrong with you animals <laughs> yes what is wrong with you people <laughs> there's a bloody duster there <laughs> yes, but, thank um, you exactly why are we touching this <laughs> yeah. but like for you that that like if you didn't like sand or the beach there you'd have been in real trouble doing that scene that ever yeah. that we're seeing it, that would have been rough i mean they were so like that scene was so it was just so cold um, that everybody was like, I mean, I, I got out and they had like a thermal blanket, like the kind, you know, like if you were- if, A recovery if, blanket, is it? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. If like the, you know, a, if you were being rescued or whatever, they would give you that. So they were like very concerned. It was like, okay, you're out. Like we have to run back in and you have to take off your shoes right away and put this on. And like, it was, it was shot really, you know, as quickly as possible. And um, so it really wasn't, that bad. So it was totally you, you at least had you at least had shoes on when you were standing in the water. Um. Yeah, I think I did. That, did that, I? that would be better. That would be better. I think I did for some of it. Like, because you couldn't see it, like from the far away stuff. I, I can't even remember. There was a lot of shots where I didn't have shoes, but I think for what we sh what you see in the poster, I think I did have shoes on because they were kind that of like. Be, for me, standing around something like that, especially whatever about standing in the water. But standing around things like that, there'd be fish and stuff. No. So you don't like fish either? No. Well, I don't mind fish. I don't mind looking at them, but I'm not getting in the water with them. Oh, I'm <laughs> <very> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. That's so funny. A lot of stuff comes out on this podcast. <laughs> I know. Like, we're going really deep into this. I've never <laughs> told people about my weird tactile issue with flour. And, yeah. Such is life. Such is life. <laughs> but, um, like, so obviously the film the film is hopefully going to be out relatively soon i hope I, yeah I don't, I don't have a date but um hopefully i mean i know it'll I, be this year point. i've literally i've literally asked everybody to try and scarf a date out of somebody somebody has to know something uh, it, can't, it can't be long now it's fully shot it's fully shot and everything so it can't it can't be much longer you know i think More. it's it buddy buddy was saying it's it's down it's that it's in talks with production companies yeah, yeah, it's it's basically just about distribution at this point, like who they want to go with, uh, what kind of deal they're going to get as far as that goes. But yeah, I mean, picture's locked. I think everything is done, done, as far as I know. So how would you rate the kills in this then, out of 10? Oh. Like, um, like maybe, maybe like obviously you don't want to say, oh, I died or this person died, but like overall, the creativity of the kills in this one. Oh, the creativity, like 10. There's some really unique kills, I will say that. I mean, when you look back at the original one, there was a couple of unique ones. And yes. Obviously, the cop getting the, the 2 by 4 to the cheek, that was rough. Am I frozen? I'm so sorry. No, no, you're, no, oh. you're grand. Okay. Um, yeah, so obviously the cop getting the, the, the little broken piece of wood to the face. Right. That was horrendous. Or then obviously you have... Um, the gaff hook scene in the yes. yeah. that That's, scene that, that was nearly back. like the original that was nearly like the original terrifier scene yeah that's that that idea came that way the kills in the I first think. one and i feel like in this one there's just even more i, I i'm extremely looking forward to it. like as tim said he loves more the mysteries i don't really um not, not that i don't like them i just it's not something that I'd go to. Got you. But uh, with the name that's attached to it, I, I might have to. And the fact that I've spoke this up really highly for the last six months <laughs> and spoke to <laughs> nearly everybody on the crew. <laughs> that's 
awesome. Yeah, there's, I mean, this one definitely has like murder mystery elements, but I think it's a good mix with that and then like just straight horror. So it's kind of, I think it works for both. Yeah, it's great. Well, like you, you love Scream as well, Greg, do you know what I mean? And like that's, yeah. the original Scream is a murder mystery. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're, they're all kind of who done it the whole way through. Um, so like I'm, it's probably going to be something similar to that. And that, I, that's probably why Scream is my favorite franchise in like the horror yeah. stuff. H hung my hat right. on that one early and said it was the the best horror franchise. And then I'd get all these Nightmare and Elm Street. And now, no, none of them, none of them compared to Scream. Um, Bear in mind, it took me till 2020 to see Scream for the first time. Are you serious? Yeah. I'd always thought I'd always thought I'd seen it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go and rewatch these three. Yeah. And I was sitting there watching it going, uh, no idea what's going on here. I've never seen this before in my life. It was a scary, scary yeah. movie. Tricked you, Greg. <laughs> and freak, and freak, I know what you did last Friday the Thirteenth, and all yeah. those other ones. No, but it tricks you into thinking you have seen Scream because it uses the Ghostface mask and it uses the similar enough plotline, like plotline to it. So it tricked you into thinking you'd seen it. But I mean, I had a, I had a great two days watching the three of them, though. Going, well, these are awesome. Yeah. Um, but obviously, uh, like you've worked on this one. This is the big one for this year um that i'm waiting on um i'm still as i said to you there probably last week or the week before i still can't get my hands on sawed off yeah that's so weird i don't know what the i don't know what their deal is like it's i don't know if it's is it available anywhere in like outside of the u.s i thought it was it might be but it might be say australia new zealand i know there's different regions yeah but i i can't get my hands on it <laughs> You talk to Jeff by chance? He would know. Uh, I think I did send him a message. Okay, can't, I can't remember. I'll I'll check for you. I'll try to find out because yeah, that's um, that's around because I feel like it keeps popping up on new platforms, so that should be somewhere. I I'm know, gonna... I know a few people that have seen it though and said that it was it was very fun. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, and there's some really good kills in that one. That's a it's if you like like kind of horror comedy and kind of like campy like throwback horror comedy particularly you'll you'll like that a lot. Yeah, um, that's what I'm waiting on. Um, so as it says, I can't even go into it too much on that because I still haven't seen it. Right. Um, but I know I've seen a couple of the ads that you that, that yourself had put up and that had been shared around and stuff, and I was like, yeah, this looks awesome. Like I sent it into the lads in the group chat. But yeah. we first got in contact, I was like, this looks fun, lads. I'll get there eventually. I'm going to find um, out. From I know I have I have seen Ruin Me. Oh, OK, yeah. Cool. That was, was that one of your first movies? 2017 or 2016, was it? It was one of the first movies that came out that I did. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that doesn't sound thing. But yeah, I quite enjoyed that. I thought it was a different take. Um, I actually thought it was when I first got it. I thought it was you know that one that was set in the Aztec place, the the ruins, where. Oh uh, right, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And that's what I thought it was, and I sat there and watched it. I was like, I'm pretty sure this is the complete wrong movie that I watched. <laughs> that's so funny, but like not <laughs> what I expected. Yeah, that movie. I mean, that movie was so like it did so well, and we it was crazy. I mean, I don't know if anybody expected that. Like, we just did an insane things on the festival circuit and then it ended up on Shutter. So I was so like, I mean, it was a low budget movie. I went into it not knowing what was gonna happen with it. And I'm so happy that it did so well because it like really led to so much more horror and I always wanted to do horror. So that was kind of, I mean, I'm very, so, very grateful for that. Like, like Shutter's great for that. It, it's picking up all these indie movies that w might get swept under the carpet or you'll find them in, I don't know whether they have like like bargain bins in, in, sure, in yeah. shops in the States and stuff. Um, but like I was saying when I was talking to Cheney, when I was in the States, I picked up Haunt in Walmart for $1. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I picked it up not knowing what to expect. It had a clown on the front of it. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> and I was pleasantly surprised with that one. Yeah. Um, the same, the same as I said for this one though, I watched it thinking it was a completely different movie. So funny. And, uh, it, I really enjoyed it. And the other one I've seen, it's not some, well, it's kind of horror-esque, was um, Death Kiss. Oh, sure, yeah. A little bit horror. 
kind of yeah yeah it's a it's the, the so this wasn't a bad remake isn't it the remake with charles bronson yeah yeah charles no bronson definitely yeah. very inspired by that for sure yeah yeah um, and of, which was was very fun you had more prominent role in this one yeah 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 so i don't know i mean as far as like i don't i, I don't i know the original death wish i don't know the franchise itself that well but i know you know like the premise and everything and i know they were obviously like really inspired by that and then uh bronzy the actor looks insanely identical so, it, so, so you know what when I when I watched that, all I could think of was I don't know what I've ever seen. Um, have you seen the movie Jane Silent Bob Strike Back? Yeah, of course. Do so you know when Chris Rock when they're directing the Star Wars knockoff? And oh they have yeah. The, the lightsaber. All I could think to myself was him going, "Oh, George Lucas gonna sue somebody." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I actually thought it, I actually thought they got Charles Bronson back at one stage, and I was like, no. It, it, like he, it, it's eerily similar. It's really eerily similar. When I was offered the role, somebody sent me like a poster that they had made, like some kind of preliminary poster with just him on the cover. And I was like, I, I showed somebody like a friend. I was like, hey, this is this project I'm doing. And they were like, that's Charles Bronson. And I was like, I don't think he's alive. But <laughs> yeah, so no, but yeah, I mean, it's like, it's crazy. Yeah. Like it's nuts. It was very enjoyable as well. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Um, like as I said, I, I wouldn't be a huge fan of certain remakes. Obviously, we've seen remakes come out of those kind of eighties movies that haven't been very good. Obviously, we had Bruce Willis come in and do another one. I can't remember which one Bruce Willis done right now, but it was awful. Um, I actually didn't even see it. I know what you're talking about, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. It's it's gone off the top of my head. But like this one wasn't it? This one was actually enjoyable as a remake. Um, again, not so. It's got horror elements to it, but um, it was good to see you then jump from there to. Well, was it Costa Rica you were in filming Quest for Love? Yes, that was yeah. <laughs> it was funny. I shot Quest for Love and then like went right into Mutilator too. So <laughs> very very different genre. I mean, yeah. I mean, you got to travel around. Oh yeah, that was very, I mean, that was a great experience. I was very happy shooting that. I got to see like all the animals in Costa Rica, which was my main um, desire. I was like, we're not shooting today? Great, I'm gonna find every animal that I possibly can. Sharks, snakes, spiders, everything. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, poisonous, dangerous animals. And a lot of like yeah. cute animals that are not poisonous. Some of, those, some of those cute ones can be poisonous too though. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> um, but obviously that was a big difference for you to go sort of horror action and then rom rom com. Yeah. Totally like night and day. But it was really fun. That one was um I mean it's always nice to be able to do things that kind of showcase your range and it's it's fun to work in different genres like that. It's it's always a challenge, so I really liked that. But it was pretty funny coming from that and then immediately like, okay, now let's go like butcher everybody. <laughs> So now she's just ruined it for me, Ted. She just told me she's the killer. Well, somebody butchers everybody. <laughs> we 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 had to know we had to know somebody was going to do it. I, I mean, you could have you could have said someone mutilated people rather than butchered. That would have been, been the better, better verb. Way. That would have been the better verb. You're right. <laughs> um, no, but like, yeah, it's great to see you picking up roles in different things because it's obviously going to lead to obviously more work for you, which means more exposure and more money. Which is always nice, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. But the more exposure for yourself is obviously the better you get made into different movies. Um, so when you took up acting, was it horror you intently wanted to get into? I mean, when I first got into, I came from a theater background, so I did a lot of theater and then I got into film and I really just wanted to do, you know, good roles that required like deep, real acting. I love acting. I love acting. Um. But I always, I mean, I grew up on horror. I loved horror. So it, it was like, once I kind of got into working in that, I was super happy. Like I, it sort of just felt like the natural progression. Like I've always wanted to act in good roles and good films, period. But because I, you know, loved horror, it was like, this feels very right. And I was super happy to get into that. And once I did, I mean, once Ruin Me happened, I just was getting a lot more offers in the horror world. So it's been like a good kind of progression. I mean, the horror world, we've brought it up with many different guests. 
the fan base are so tightly knit it's probably the best genre because the, the fans are a lot more appreciative of it True, um, yeah. rather than maybe apart from maybe the likes of star wars and say star trek people horror no, no they're all shit star wars <laughs> fans are horrible like i i'm a big star wars fan but star wars fans are horrible because they are real clicky so it's it's very much like but they didn't stick to the very original way of how uh, this was meant to happen and like you get that all the time and it it really is like it's a real shitty toxic environment oh that but, sucks i didn't know that yeah it, like I, marvel is the same like if, if you get into that like if you've got casual fans and they're fine but the more like extreme fans are very toxic oh that wow. doesn't stick to the comic book that you know yeah there's 80 different thousand versions of the comic book lads you know they can't hit all of them so they're right. very toxic but horror is very different from that because people just want a good horror like everyone has their preferred like gore fest or storyline based or whatever um but they're all appreciative of the other bits i find hot the horror one tends to be a lot better than those bigger fandoms because people just have their they're, they're very set in their ways like it has to be this way and then it's not and people are like right that 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 was shit like doesn't happen in horror people in horror just are happy like just oh we got a good horror brilliant next one let's go it's because it, it's the, they're the really far between <laughs> i didn't realize that about the like star trek though and that's crazy i had no idea that's really like you'd think if you're a you know if you're fans if you're a fandom of something like you'd be more supportive even i don't know that's interesting yeah like if you look up just the reviews and stuff for like the latest star wars the ones with um daisy ridley in them like people oh they were shit they were shit they were shit i was kind of like lads you're going to see a film where they you want to what you want to see is people in space fighting with big shiny lightsabers you got that what the fuck else did you want out of it because that's what i wanted i wanted mark hamill in the film i got mark hamill in the film I was delighted. Outside of that, yeah, fighting, good music, lightsabers, good. Yeah, it hits everything for me. Yeah, well, that that for me now, horror will be my go-to. Like I watch an insane amount of horror film, films, like I insane. Like, I I literally find something. Sometimes I even just go on to the likes of Netflix and go into horror and hit random and just go from there. Oh, I love like, that. That's cool. I've, yeah. Look, like, some of the amount of crap that I've watched. And a lot of it that I forget, a lot of it that I forget, and I'd put it, it'd come on again in a couple of years, and I'd be like, I've seen this. <laughs> oh yeah, I've done that too. I went through a phase where it was like back in the day, and I would just every night put on a different horror movie, and sometimes it would be from like Redbox or whatever, you know, when that was really still a thing. And I waded through a lot of just not good <laughs> movies, and then every once in a while you find a gem. Like I remember seeing House of the Devil. Um, by Ty West, which is one of my favorite movies, and I was like, "Oh, I get it. funny, funny that? that you like, funny that you actually mentioned that because like it's it's a thing I've brought up on this show a good few times. Me and one of the lads used to do that. We used to go into X-rays and we used to, when we used to work there as well, and find sort of the five worst looking movies we could find because it used to be five movies for five nights for a fiver, and we'd go and watch them and see what good ones we came out of it. I got House of the Devil out of it." Okay. Yeah. I got Wrong Torn 2003 out of it. But the big one that I got was Dog Soldiers. Oh, I haven't seen that. Ah, oh, so oh. good. Well, there okay. goes the last question of the night that Carl's gonna uh, he's gonna laugh about again. Uh, hey, Dog no. Soldiers. Dog Soldiers was a it's a werewolf army versus werewolf movie. Okay. Um, I don't know whether you've seen The Descent. Yes, yeah. So Neil Marshall, who directed The Descent, it was one of his first movies. It was his first movie. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and it's... So between a lot of horror fans, it, it, it's widely regarded as either the best or one of the best three werewolf movies. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know the reason, that. The, the reason I'd say it, it didn't break as big in, in the US was because probably because of... The humor that's in it it's okay. got real dry british humor oh i like that but uh it's I, I mean if you haven't seen it go check it out 
Okay, I'm um, it's got it's got Sean Pertwee in it. It's got Liam Cunningham in it. Um, and what Kevin McKay. Huh? Uh, 2004, I think. Oh, okay. 2004? Yeah. yeah, I think it's 2004. Two. 2002. 2002. Somewhere around the early um, 2000s, yeah. And it's got, yeah, no, because it was 20 years last year, so. Uh, yeah, 2002. 2002, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's got Liam Cunningham and it's got Kevin McKay in it. So I don't know whether you watch Grey's Anatomy. I did a little bit. I don't know it massively well, but. He's, he's one of the main guys in that, apparently. Um, but I know him as as uh, dog soldiers. But um, yeah, so the likes of that, we found them in it. Um, I found House, you know, Sean, um, oh, what's his name? Sean Cunningham's one. Uh, obviously, he done Friday the 13th. Yeah. And he done that. Um, it's great when you see people like you out there, you have the exact same kind of way that we did. And just picking up random movies to see. Yeah, we've seen absolutely atrocious crap as well along the way. <laughs> There's some yes. bad ones in there, all right. Yeah. That's um, part of the process, but like that's that's also fun, you know. Like it's it's if everything you pick up is brilliant, it's like I don't know, I don't know. There's I like different types of things, and sometimes like you want to see something that's just kind of ridiculous. Right uh, now, I'll I'll throw one out here. Right, what's your top five horror films? Oh my god. People always ask me this and I always like blank and then I'm like, I need to sit down and write a list. Um, okay, I'll the whole, the whole thing. The whole thing with writing a list is it'll change an hour down the road. That is true. That is yeah. true. Okay, um, I'm just gonna pick five that I really like because I don't know if they're my very well, five, top. Put, it, put this one in then five, five movies, that, five horror movies that you'd rewatch regularly. Okay, um, okay. Halloween, of course. Halloween 3. Love Halloween 3. Um, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. There's a game of that coming out. Yeah. You know what? I think I saw something about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, that's going to be pretty fun. It's going to be like the Texas Chainsaw game, I think. Oh, yeah. My friend's in that one. Um, okay, I love... In the game? Uh, he's in the, t the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, yeah. Who's in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game? His name's Dove Mir. Or Meyer, shit, I don't remember how you say his last name, but we, we worked together on a film way back when. I know he's in that. Oh, I was going to say, no, I've never seen, I was kind of, I was thinking you were like, you're going to say someone that I actually might have known. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to that guy. No, 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 it's okay. He wouldn't be offended. Um, he could um, be, but... <laughs> I love The Changeling. That was a good yeah. movie. I love that. It's, it's, mm. yeah, I love that. Um, Phantasm. Phantasm 2. <laughs> I don't really remember Phantasm 2. Yeah, no one does. That's the <laughs> joke of it. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> it was a uh, um, bad, bad sequel. Yeah. I, I don't even, I don't know if I saw it, honestly. But anyway, apparently I'm not missing out. So there's that. Um, no. I don't, there's, God, there's so many. Um, I like. I also really like like horror comedy. A lot of stuff from like the two thousands, like Idle Hands, stuff like Idle that. Idle Hands was myself, brilliant. Thank you. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Seth Green, um, Devin Sawyer. Yes, yeah, so I love. Yeah, yeah. that was. That's a that class. was. Was that the movie that sprung? Did he get that off the back of Final Destination, or did that spring him to Final Destination? I can't you quite know, remember. That's a good question. I think they I think came it, out at the same time, so I don't know which was first. Yeah, and then you, have, you had a young Jessica Alba in there as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was, yeah. I don't, that was, was it, like, what, 2000? It, yeah, 2000, yeah. Was it Seth Green that had the bottle in his head, or was it the other lad? That was the other guy? The other guy, yeah. The, the, the bigger yeah. guy, yeah. 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 I always just remember his hand in the microwave, and, like, it's just... <laughs> it's so, uh, have you seen the new Wednesday show? Um, only, only very slightly. I have so, yet to dive in. So there's, um, there's two fan theories going around about it. And I want to see, I want to get your take on it, right? Okay. So the fan theory number one is that the hand from Idle Hand is Ting. Oh. Right? So this was a new one that I seen. Uh, obviously, I think they're ripping the other one off. Where the other theory is that it's Bruce Campbell's Ash. The hand that he cuts off in Evil Dead. That's pretty funny. Okay. Yeah. What 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 do you make of that? I mean, I 
I don't know which hand it is, but if I could pick a hand of those two, I think I'd go with the idle hands hand because it doesn't get utilized much. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I need to watch that. I I, uh, I keep hearing, you know, good things and it's uh, it was phenomenal. Did you? Oh, you thought so? Okay, good. Yeah. No, I didn't. Oh. I, I'm going to put it out there and I don't know whether you know them, but uh, obviously Catherine Cena Jones and Lewis Guzman were Morticia and uh, Gomez. I didn't like their casting. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, obviously, we grew up with Ronald Julia and. Um, oh. Angelica Houston's thing. They had such a great connection where they did, didn't have it in this one. Yeah. Um, but Jenna Ortega was fantastic. She's always good. Yeah. yeah. She's always great. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, it, it was very good. It, it was off the imagination of Tim Burton, so you know it's kind of what you're going to get. Sure. Yeah, I watched, like, I think maybe the first... 15 minutes or something of the first episode and I, I don't know I didn't dislike it or anything I think I just got distracted because sometimes I'm kind of like really ADD when I'm watching stuff but uh, I'll go back and, and finish it, it is good it is good obviously you've seen the dance <laughs> I've seen the dance yes uh, that absolutely it's everybody has gone somewhere it's on Netflix. I was surprised to see that song being used in a thing on Netflix Wait, but yeah the, the Goo Goo Muck yeah yeah it's a good song though Oh, it's a great song. I was just surprised, like, at the usage of that. I, I don't know. Uh, I love like old punk stuff, so I was not expecting that. Yeah. Um. So, we'll, we'll start to wind down because I don't want to keep you too long into the into the afternoon for yourself. Over obviously based in LA. Um. And we do want to take take time. Thank you to come up for coming on. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, it was fun. And then, have you got anything upcoming that you'd, you'd like to promote before I bring up the one thing that we've actually had in common that I can say I've seen fully, other than ruin me? Um, sure. Like, um, I'm trying to think. Okay, well, I'm obviously, Mutilator 2 is coming. Um, I do have a film that's kind of a, a horror western called Ghost Town that just released a trailer, and that one will be coming in March. So we have that. Um, I have The Shed, which is in festivals on the circuit right now. We just won... Um, audience choice for best horror short at another hole in the head festival so we're super super happy about that um we have a the next project for moon cats coming as well which is a little bit similar to that um hollowed grounds and there's a, I, honestly i have a lot of films coming but those are the ones that i can kind of give you any decent amount of like release date like it's soon ish but i i have a lot coming so well if you want send us on the link to um, that one that's coming in March, and we'll we'll attach it to the title show. Oh sure, yeah, I can do that definitely. Um, uh, as you, as you mentioned there, the shed was the one that I said I'd, that we, I'd seen, other than ruin me fully, and obviously Dead Kiss, which isn't a horror oh, reading. Yeah. Um, the shed I thought was fantastic. Thank you so much. I really, yeah. I'm so glad you um, got it. I know we touched on it just before coming on. Um, to get Stacey Nelkin back to horror was was phenomenal um so what was it like to work with her it was really fun it was i mean she's really just you know she's a she's a strong actor she's a really nice person um and and just to hear stories you know about like her experience she has a really incredible history film wise not just in horror but in all all sorts of stuff so she's a really interesting person and you know getting to know what halloween 3 was like and just acting with her was was really amazing yeah it was great great time Sitting there with a pen and paper, taking every bit of notes off her. Yeah, right. <laughs> so tell me everything. No, uh, but yeah. Um, but the premise of that movie, it's obviously tw it's a tw twenty-two and a half minutes long, um, and it flies by. Generally, some shorts can kind of be short enough to say twenty minutes, but it can feel a lot longer. Sure. This one felt. This to me felt like another twenty minutes would have explained a lot more, and wouldn't have noticed it like how why where it came from but uh it, it did leave me one more like i've watched it twice um and i'm still trying to pick up if i missed something but um i thought i thought the idea the dark camera work was fantastic in it oh, thank you. Uh, um I, I just really enjoyed it for a short as it says in the in the post that we put up for it um it's probably one of the best shorts that I've 
uh, horror shorts that I've seen. That is so flattering. Thank you, truly, because they're, yeah, I mean, we, we really were going for a very specific look, a specific vibe, and, you know, it's like either people kind of get that or they don't, and that's fine if they don't, but so you clearly, you know, you were our audience. You got it. You get it. So I, I'm glad. Also, thanks for the screener for that. <laughs> um, we would have we would have got to go and see it at, at the debut of For the Love of Horror, but uh, as I keep bringing up, anytime someone mentions something like that, uh, Carl's missus turned forty that weekend, and we couldn't go. That's okay. That's, no, that's, we were, we're that's a go. fair reason. <laughs> No, I mean, to, I did tell him. No. I did tell him to divorce her, and uh, yeah. we'd go. Well, you probably should have just done that. I mean, really, no, I'm just yeah. <laughs> we missed. Yeah, see, Carl, even Carl, even Eva said you should have done it. Sorry, no. Arlo, but that, that's the way it is. Where's your wife? I'm sure she's a lovely, lovely person. Don't do that. <laughs> it's fine. Carl's not here right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, cool. But um. Yeah, no, we missed Dog Soldiers 20th anniversary. We missed uh, David Norton was there, obviously from American Werewolf. Um, and then obviously we had your film, the short debut on it, which I was very surprised to see it debut in the UK at it. Now I didn't not that it was yeah. that bad. We were, um, yeah, I mean we, I, we've submitted to a lot of things and they they just reached out and they're like we really like it, we want to show it, and it was like okay totally please you know but that's a big a really big thing so um yeah i'm kind of it's kind of cool to have a uk premiere i was i was happy about that we did that with rue and me too actually that um their debut was fright fest so that was the uk that's a that's a big one as well yeah fright yeah. fest runs in leicester square i think that's yeah they're, they're the two big ones aren't they yeah fright yeah. fest is the one really in terms of because it's in a cinema and yeah. stuff um like that's phenomenal to get two of your movies to be debuted somewhere in a horror con in the UK. Yeah, we were thrilled, especially as a short. You know, it's kind of difficult to get like an audience on a short unless it's at a festival. So the fact that they wanted to show that was like incredibly flattering. <laughs> we were thrilled. So I uh, I'm gonna throw it out there now. Any chance that you're being booked for the Love of Horror this year? I have not heard anything if I am. I would I would love to go to that and I would certainly if they asked me, but no, as of now I don't I don't have anything lined up with them. I will talk to my appearances agent and see if <laughs> Neil, Ben, sort it out. Get on to <laughs> them, will you? <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, as I said to you, uh, it's been a it's been a pleasure to have you on tonight. Um and hopefully we can get you back on at some stage when you're not Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you so much for having not... me when you're not busy out the door um but yeah and i wish every success for obviously the mute letter too because well i'm looking more forward to that than probably anybody <laughs> i love that yeah, yeah. E even the cast <laughs> you're more excited than we are that's awesome uh, and uh and every other movie that you have due to come out or that's finished and ready to go and every success in in the future Thank you so um, much. Because I've, 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 no, I've no doubt that you will be, your name will be up in major lights at some stage relatively soon. Thank you. That's really, really well, nice. Big, bigger than they are now at the minute anyway. Um, But I think we'll leave it there for the evening, Ted. What do you think? Yeah, well, we can't finish with our usual question of dog soldiers or American werewolf. That's mm. the big argument on this uh, this podcast me and Greg are staunch dog soldiers being the greatest <laughs> werewolf film of all time. I, I, I need to see this. Yeah, uh, the other two hosts. Go watch are... it and then let us know. Yeah, I will report back. Also, I should have even I should have mentioned this. I have a werewolf movie coming. You guys. Oh, oh. yes. Now we're I'm, a creature, I'm a creature feature guy. Send it right here. It, I don't even have a release date, but when I hear anything, you'll be the first to know. What's yeah. it called? Hellhounds. Oh, yes. Intriguing. I like the name. We're I'll send in. you the trailer. I think they they have their trailer out. I'll send it oh, to you. Deadly. Yeah, no, uh, werewolf awesome. films are like a big thing on this, but there's there's only like four or five like there's three good ones, a couple of okay ones, and then the rest are kind of horror Man. comedy ones that are yeah. okay, and then you've loads of really shit ones. So oh, yeah. we've had like <laughs> we've had ongoing debates about uh, American Werewolf versus Dog Soldiers because the two boys are staunchly on American Werewolf and the two of us are just like no no, no 
lads. Nah, it's, nah. it's not even okay, close. I'm it's gonna watch it, and I'm going to settle this for you guys once and for all. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do, right? We actually have an episode where we had a guest come on to be a judge between the four of us as we oh, debated really? which one was better. I'll send it to you. After you watch it, I'll send it to you. And you okay. can have a listen to it and see what you think and who makes the better points and then you can tell us which movie's better. Okay, all right, It'll be, done. It'll be Dog Soldiers. Yeah. Right, I, I, I am going Like it will be based on this conversation. But... <laughs> <laughs> what happens? We, we've we've, uh, we've, we've poisoned her mind, the lads will say, no, that's not fair, you just cheated. No, no, it's fine. I will be open. <laughs> right, uh, this, is, this has been your On The Slab for your Friday evening. This has been a great conversation. Um, I will finish this the way I finish it every week. In the words of the great George A. Romero, ladies and gentlemen, stay scared.